How's Zeus doing, B? Good. Yeah, is he taking a nap? Finally, after eating a ton of sand. Yeah. He ate so much sand. Oh. He's not really loving the water yet. We'll get there. This is Angie. Hi. Say hi. Hi. Last time on Sailing Balachandra, we welcomed Zeus, our newest crew member, and as part of our prep for Bahamas, we removed the mast. Hey guys, so we're hauled out of the water. You can see here, our bottom paint is still in really good shape from the last time we did it. If you just go back and click on this video, you can watch us doing the bottom paint last year. We caught ourselves some fishing line. But we've got these blades here which keeps it from getting into our prop here. So another thing to look at here is our zincs. We were in the water for up to a year. This one here is well deteriorated. This is an aluminum zinc. It's hardly deteriorated at all. Use aluminum zincs for fresh water. Not so much for salt water, but you can see there is some pitting here. So it was doing something. And I've got a zinc here at the end of the prop. And this one in particular actually fared really well. We only lost a little bit off the end. I don't know, I might consider just uh, leaving it on there when we launch. So yeah, we're going to drop the rudder today. The main reason we're dropping the rudder is because we're going to be cruising in the Bahamas for a long time and I was told when I bought the boat that the rudder wasn't in great shape. I'm pretty sure that it's delaminated, but it's definitely a wet rudder and the webbing inside is made of mild steel, which is super dangerous because if that rots or rusts and breaks and falls off, we lose our rudder underway. Really bad idea. The guys here at the club put our rudder just off the end of the slip here. So once I drop the rudder down, there's this space here, but that's not enough to get the rudder out. This whole slip can move, because this is the slip they used to you know, actually launch the boats. When this slip moves, we can drop the rudder lower and get it out. So this is the aft settee near our transom right here. And this is probably the best way for me to access our steering connections. Um, and all of my <laughs> lines and cables and ropes and stuff were stored in here. Here I am inside of my aft settee near my transom. This is where my rudder shaft is coming up through the boat. And this all has to be disconnected. And this is my autopilot control arm here, and that has to be disconnected. And below here is my autopilot sensor arm, and that has to be disconnected. That bolt right there has to come off so that the rudder can drop. I went ahead and marked all of the center points for the autopilot and for the actual steering column so that no matter what happens, I hopefully won't have to calibrate anything when I go back in. I've removed all of the steering stuff and I'm ready to drop the rudder shaft. This is like a bearing that spins and goes around on this plate. And so now I just gotta pop these bearings off and once that's done, it should be free to drop. All right, well, it took all day the way these things typically do, but I got my rudder now tied on and I did this rope that goes across and below kind of a little basket for the rudder to hold. And that's my car jack underneath that's holding the rudder up. I had to lift the rudder slightly just to allow for me to remove the last bolt. And yes, there's a party going on. They've been partying here all, all day here at the dock. So I'm ready now to remove the jack and let the lines take the load of the rudder and then I will slowly move the rudder down. And if I don't have enough room to totally remove the rudder, I can lower the slip and get it down the rest of the way. All right, so I got the rudder dropped just by a couple inches here. It worked out okay. So the rope's holding, this blocking is holding. So the next step is to drop this slip just a bit and let the pressure go on the rope so then I can lower it down using the ropes which are attached right up here on my winches. All right, so we got the rudder down. Here it is. I just needed a couple guys to stand on each side to support it as it came down. Uh, we didn't get it on video because I actually had to help. So yeah, it only took about 20 minutes to drop it the last little bit. The surprise for me was how much it actually weighs. I mean, this rudder is probably like, I'd give it two, 300 pounds easy. I've got my rudder out. I'm ready to cut it open and see what I've got inside. I know it's wet and I've been told that all of the webbing inside the framework that is it welded to the shaft itself is supposed to be mild steel so let's find out. All right, 
so now that I've cut all along the edges here and made kind of a window, I've got my pry bar and I'm just getting this under here. So here's the big reveal. Wow, right? Check this one out. Okay, what we're looking at here is rigid foam. That's normal. This one here, the, like that window insulation foam that you buy at the hardware store, like what's that doing here? And of course everything's soaking wet. But there's good news and there's bad news here. The good news is the fiberglass layer looks pretty good. Like, I mean, it's not wet, it's not delaminated. So chances are the whole thing has decent fiberglass left inside, which is great. I can use that. The other good news is that these webbings inside appear to be stainless steel, not mild steel. I was told these would be mild steel and that I would have to get new ones welded on. But from the looks of this, they are not mild steel. They're stainless steel, which is what I was hoping for and what I kind of expected to see. So I'm just going to clear out all this crappy core fill, refill it with expanding foam and then reglass this side and I'm done. So it turns out if you're working with urethane expanding foam, you want to have as little moisture as possible and roughly 23 degrees Celsius or so. Some people were kind enough to let me use this awesome room here at the club where I'm going to be working on my rudder. Here's the rudder all set up on saw horses. I was able to use actually the, the jack from my car and uh, did this pretty much all by myself. I have already removed all of the foam as you can see. This stuff here is actually some kind of a filler. We'll sanded the inside of this fiberglass layer just enough to rough it up so that the foam will bond to the fiberglass. This steel shaft and all of these webbings were in pretty good shape actually. There was some rusty looking spots, but it was just staining really. So I took a wire wheel and polished up every part that I could see. Actually, if you look really closely here, you can see there's a bit of pitting in the rust, but it's not that bad. It's only in a few spots like here on the shaft and there. The weld looks good, no problem there. So at this stage, all I need to do is wipe this down with some acetone to clean up any dust or grease or debris or whatever might be in there and uh, get it all ready to go. And I can start mixing up my expanding foam and pouring it in. Look, you just showed up. <laughs> hey guys, hey Zeus, hi. Come check out the rudder progress. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The expanding foam I'm using is from Smooth On. It's called Foamit 10. Okay, with this foam, you use equal parts A and B. The first thing you want to do is shake this up really good. Okay, start with this one. And we'll do the same. And there, and you have about 45 seconds to stir it before it starts to set up. And it says to stir rigorously. Okay, so I am officially done pouring foam. So you can see that I've already kind of carved this to a degree. I had poured all this foam and it overflowed and everything. I took a, a regular saw, like a wood cutting hand saw, and it worked really well for carving this out. And then I just filled all the low spots with some more foam. So I'll just carve the rest of these spot file and sand it down smooth. And then I'll be ready to start doing epoxy and fiberglass work. Now that I'm done rough carving the foam using the saw, like I need to knock this part down here a bit and just get that, that perfect curve that I have on the other side. I also need to remove all this bottom paint and barrier coat that's on this side. There it is. 
So I've now totally carved and shaped the foam and it's a pretty good match from one side to the other. So I should be able to go to the next step now, which is sealing this with epoxy. And then after that, I'll be adding some filler so that I can push it into some of these holes. You don't want these air pockets underneath the glass. All right, so I've got the first layer of epoxy done and it's dry. I also took a trowel and spread around some thickened epoxy. So that's epoxy mixed with 404 filler. And so now I'm ready to sand this down. I'm going to clean it with some acetone and then I'm ready to wet it out and lay some fiberglass. So I'm going to be using 1808 fiberglass, which is a really heavy fiberglass. I'm putting down two layers of that. So I'm done, the fiberglass. <laughs> so when that started to get tacky, I just went over it with a bit of thickened epoxy just to clean up and fill up any little voids or holes that was left over. And so now I'm ready to do the fairing compound. And in order to prep the surface, I sanded everything down and I used acetone to clean up all the dust and anything that might be there. And I'm ready to apply this fairing compound. Okay, so now that one side of the rudder is finished, I'm now working on the other side. And yes, this looks like a total mess. I've scraped some of that away and sanded and gotten right down to some glass in certain places. If you look and see everything that I have circled, these are spots where holes were drilled. And I'm obviously not the first person to own this rudder. I have no idea what they were drilled for, probably to drain or to find, you know, the steel members within the rudder itself. I don't know if they were filled with epoxy. And this one was filled with teak. Hard to believe. So uh, I circled them because I'm going to grind them all out one at a time and then properly patch them with 105 and 206 epoxy and some biaxial cut into small pieces. So I've had a chance to grind away some of these spots that I had circled where I want to do some repairs. They're ground out little cavities there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see these, but there's a significant dip there. It's important to have a dip so that you can get enough glass and material in there that it does a decent patch. Okay, so all my patches are dry and sanded and ready to go. I've already started to throw a fairing compound down. I'm going to fair all the rest of the rudder. The other thing I'm about to do is I'm going to take my Dremel and just grind in here and remove some of this material just up against where the shaft goes into the rudder because this is a spot where a lot of leaks occur on a lot of boats. I'm not going to grind right through the full fiberglass layer, but I am going to grind just a little bit in there so I can throw some G-Flex epoxy in there. It's a flexible epoxy. Okay, so I used the Dremel and I got right in here and made like a nice little groove all the way around here. Now I'm ready to start doing the bottom paint. Interprotect 2000E barrier coat. I've mixed it up here. I'm gonna apply it with a roller. Well, done. There's four coats of barrier coat on here. It looks really nice. Time to put it back on the boat. This is very heavy rudder and there's, I can't think of any way to get it back onto the boat without doing something elaborate. So I'm gonna build a cradle for the rudder with wheels on it that you can roll underneath the back of the boat and then use a jack to push the rudder back up into the boat. I'm gonna see how it goes. Yeah, woohoo. All right, so here's the structure I built with the rudder in it. This is all built of two by fours and there's some casters on it to wheel it around and it's all braced with the best engineering I can basically come up with on my own. I used the spar crane to lift up the rudder into the air and then lower it back down into this wooden cradle. Now this is the slipway at the club and what I can do is lower the slip which separates it from where my boat is and where the cradle is just far enough and it drops just far enough that I can line up that hole with the top of the rudder. Hey Noel. <laughs> It's Zeus. Yeah. 
So I've now totally dismantled the cradle I was using to lift it up because the cradle was all around it. It was in the way. Ty came up on me saying rubber boots here. That's okay. I still can work and I've only got a few more inches to go. Next time on Sailing Balachandra, we get launched and we finally get assigned our mooring for the summer. We start planning our trip to the Caribbean and of course, Zeus. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't become one of our Patreon members yet, you really should go and check it out and see if it's something you'd like to do. We're gonna be posting a lot of content that we don't post on YouTube, so you'll be able to check that out. Especially when we go offshore, we're gonna be posting a lot of really cool sailing stuff and you know, we're gonna be in the Caribbean. And if you like our videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you want, leave a like or a comment below. I'll see you guys later. Come on, Zeus. Come on. <laughs> Zeus. Going for a haircut tomorrow. It's gonna look very different.